part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Burbank. You're listening to The Krypton Report. All right, so we just saw the trailer for Battle of the Super Sons. Sayla, you go first. Okay, so there are kids, and there's Robin, Supergirl, what's the, um, Superman, what's the other kid? Superboy? It has Superman, Supergirl, Robin, but what's the other one? There's Superboy. No, there's like four of them. That's not Supergirl. I don't know. I'll have to watch it again. Um, um, can't do it. What do you think of the trailer, Sayla? Um, it was cool. Okay. Turn it back on. Okay. Um, it had, like, kids in it. Yeah? It had Robin, um, um, Robin, um, Robin, um, Superboy, Supergirl. I don't know the other one. So let's just watch. Okay. And what, then I'll tell the other one. What did you think, Solomon? Wait, I'm not done yet. Hold on. Let Solomon talk for a minute. Okay. Well, well, it's not Supergirl, actually. It's not Supergirl. Hold on. Yes. Let's watch. Just Solomon. So what, say what you're thinking. Um, it's cool. It's cool that it's. The bad guy is Starro. Yeah. But I wish I would just was something else. Look at that. They have to fight their dads. That'd be like me and you fighting Solomon. Yeah. Oh. Super it's, Bo- it's um It's Wonder Girl. That's who it is. It's Wonder Girl and, and Beast Boy. Yeah. But it's Cassie as as Wonder Girl. So it is a young kid's Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl. Superboy, Roland, and Beast Boy. Uh, yeah, Beast Boy was there. I'm. Uh, what did you think, Solomon? What else did you think? I thought it was Supergirl. Um, but I bad guy was actually um, like all of the Batman and Superman villains. Like they, Robin and Superboy have fight all of them. Including Star Wars, like Star the Leader. See, when you get a little bit older, I'm going to get you those Super Sons comics. I think you'll love them. Yeah. So, we're pumped. Um, we know that Green Lantern comes out in July. So, that means that this would come out maybe... In August. August or September. I think it's August. You but know? Tra- every single trailer, it says it comes out, comes out, but it so, just says... This, for this trip, it didn't say... It just said coming it. soon. Yeah, but... So we know it comes out this year. Um... Probably yeah. September or August. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That will go with September. Yeah. I think that's a good get bet. Right. All right, guys. Mm. Cool. I, I think August. Podcast. Now part of the Press Play Podcasting Network. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow, and with me is the Man of Steel, the Superman of Red, that friendly guy that you just want to high-five, Mr. James Cole. Welcome, James. How's it going? Hi, ho there, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at me like that for? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I got swimmers here. Good, how are because, you? Because, you know. I went swimming and I was an idiot, mm. which I never get. So uh-uh. it, it makes it even more frustrating right now that my ear is clogged. So, but hey, we have some Superman to talk about, right. and before then, we're going to touch on a little bit, just just a little bit of the um, news because there's been a little bit, you know, and we got some exciting parts, and we're just going to jump right into it, okay? Because you know. That's how life is. Are you ready? Stargirl. Season 3 promo trailer. 
coming soon. What'd you think? Um, and there wasn't much to show really. I mean, it looks like Starman's there. He's going to help star girl train up a bit, probably learn some new stuff. And he says, let's, and it's we time saw, to level um, up. so Cindy, I Cindy um, Berman, she was, uh, she was there yep. quickly. It was only 30 seconds. Everything was quick flashes. Um, yeah. Yeah, like 20-something seconds. Um, I mean, it was all quick flashes of everybody. Um, the most interaction you got with was Starman, Stargirl. Pat was there. Um, they flashed the mom and Cindy. Um, I don't even remember if they showed any of the did. other JSA. So, um, I mean, 23 seconds. But, you know, we get flash. that. Just let you know it's coming. Oh, it's been a great show. And, we and got Stargirl's that. been a good show. We're getting so. this, you know, Stargirl thing. Yeah. Um, you know, the week that Superman and Lois is ending and The Flash both wrap up. But what I find interesting is it says coming soon. And didn't they say that Stargirl was going to be... Um, Right, that's what I was thinking. I thought that's it was, was supposed to start in the fall during somebody else's slot. normal kind of like um so yeah. Yeah. But didn't they say at one point it was going to be like so that, yeah, I mean in late or, summer. So that's that's kind of that why was like, earlier, it just says though. coming soon and I'm just like, well, fall is October. And that's what July, August, September, October. That's 4 months, which I feel is a little too far, but to but at the same time, is it too far to start kind of teasing out? Um, I mean, for a 20 second promo, I, I don't think it's too early. Um, I mean, let people know with that 20 second promo, it's kind of like just let people know like Star Girl season three is coming because you guys might be checking out for a little while because Flash and Superman is over. Possibility. I don't know. Yeah, it might be a little marketing. Uh, it was exciting there. to you know. It's hilarious because uh, good old Brian, you know, uh, is just finishing up season two because he was behind because he didn't take our advice that Star Girl was awesome. Hmm. I was to say he waited till season mm-hmm. two was done and over before he even watched any mm-hmm. of it, didn't he? Idiot. Um, <laughs> but I mean, in one breath, I, I get it because I've happened uh, to go man. through the whole, um, just dealing with the CW app, same commercials, same crap over and over waiting until it dumps on HBO. So, um, it can be nice. Yeah. Um, I, I usually... I try to check out during commercials while watching the CW app because I know it's going to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, heck, if you watch Tubi or like Pluto TV or something free that's got ads, like you'll see the same ones, but not like every single ad break. Like they, they've certainly got a lot more commercials that, that go, that go along there. So the other big news, which is exciting as crap, uh, which I had to have the kids chime in on because they're the kids, is we got the first trailer for Battle of the Super Sons, the first CG DC direct animated film. Now, before we actually talk about the film itself, um, when they said CG, what did you picture in your mind? Oh, I I mean, honestly, I mean, probably a little more like more kid, like Pixar, kind of like, like a super pet, something more in that um, vein. Not 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 yeah, a, maybe, not Paw Patrol, maybe something but, more cartoonish. You know, <laughs> um, something. Yeah. Well, what they've got, I mean, well, what they've got kind of going on here with this 
um, one, the the animation looks like it's more um, Spider Verse style. What's the um, sp- yeah Spider Verse or um, mm, that's a good uh, one. That's Armored good one. Iron Man. Uh, yeah that that pretty that pretty cool um, animated show with that young yeah, Tony Stark. That's kind of what I. That's kind of what it reminded me of. It's been a while since I've seen it, but that's yeah, what it. Okay. That's what I remembered. So, that. Well, what about you? What do you do? You um, like the yes? The anim- it took me just animation? a little bit to get used to it. I've watched the trailer I think three or four times now, um, and it just kind of it did take me a moment to. Um get used to it and I will say that everyone that has watched this trailer is super pumped and excited Jania was like wow that looks good my buddy Donovan was like wow that looks good Um, I don't think anybody has watched this and been like (laughs) you know yeah no I, I don't I'm happy I haven't to heard see, anybody say anything bad um, about it. What do you call it? You know, 11-year-old John back. I just... As much yeah, as I'm absolutely. really digging um, Son of Kal-El... It's, it, well, that's yeah, that's I just, Tom, I really Tom Taylor's love writing it, you know? 11-year-old John. Um Oh yeah, I've got I've got the uh, Super Sons trades. I, have, um, I want to buy the omnibus. Them. I want to buy an omnibus, yeah, but the problem it's, is it's really cool. The hardest part for me about buying an omnibus has been uh, so many of them. I have so many of what's inside the omnibus, and I think Super Sons would be the first one that I could buy with only having maybe a few issues, uh, individual issues. So I'm pr- I'm pretty excited. Like I want to buy it. And just carry it around, like yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got the um, I got the uh, Super Sons um, um, Savior trade. That one that kind of crossed a few books where um, Tim Drake from the future. Mm-hmm. Was I have that in individual. Going after yeah, yeah. John. Yeah, I have. I, I got that I mean, trade. Totally. I was like, yeah, definitely. Yep, that's a uh, Super Sons of Tomorrow. So is the trade. Um, there we go. But what did you? Let's get back to the trailer. Uh, so I know, uh, I don't know the voice cast other than I think it's Robert Craig. Oh, man, I know I'm screwing up his name. Robert Craig, something is the voicing Batman. I know because he's done it. His for voice sounds familiar. The um, Arkham Origins game, and uh, he did it for the he did the Batman ah, Unlimited. Right. Roger that's Craig where... Smith, that's what it was. He did the Batman Unlimited videos and the shorts that were on. Uh, I think you can watch them all on YouTube, but yeah. Well, I definitely so he, like he's I definitely liked his work in Arkham. Voice. So I'm not really like I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Like he's kind of come back into the fold. Um part of me had kind of hoped that maybe this would be um you know, in the new animation style. Um but the continuity, but it's 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 fine with what it is. Um Right. Well, you know, I mean, at least we got a uh, uh, a toddler yeah, John. You know, that's my next favorite. In John. Young Justice, but uh, Superman's voice sounds kind of familiar, but I don't, I don't have a clue who it is. So, no, yeah, me neither. Um, pretty, just pretty stoked about that. We we see that Starro is the villain, and. Solomon was pretty pumped about that. Mm-hmm. Right, I thought that was awesome. Interestingly, they came out of the mouth. So like I thought that was pretty dope. So it's like they're in hiding. How that worked out. 
and yeah, we have basically everybody gets taken uh, capture except for the Super Sons, and they got to save the day, and they got to fight their dads. We see uh, a young, uh, looks like Wally West Flash, maybe, or Bart, but we see Cassie Sandsmark, young. So maybe a potential uh, like Young Justice or, you know, some sort of team in the future film. Yep. Yeah. There was a Beast Boy Boy there. Um, Yeah, it was a nice little lineup. They had, uh, there was Martian Manhunter. Um, uh, Yeah, Beast Boy. I had to go back a couple times and watch it. kids were like, wait, who was that, Dad? Who was that, Dad? I'm like, hold on. Like, hold on, let's go, let's go back, let's go back, okay, okay. Yeah, it looks like Wally, Kid Flash, and uh, there's and Oliver. We saw Lex Luthor, Green Arrow, there. As he was uh, possessed by Starro. So we're gonna get a nice, and we see a quick glimpse of Jimmy Olsen. It's more of the new style Jimmy, as he is African American. Um, so we will get to see, um. You know, that maybe this film could be its own kind of, like I said, continuity and do some spin-offs and stuff as well. Because it looks fun and I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, they brought the Super Sons book back. Yeah, that was, so. what was it? Was it the, there was another word added to it, like the Adventures of the Super Sons or, that's what it was. Uh, challenge of the Super Sons. Yeah, I have all seven issues so, of that. That is, you know, it's it's one of those that I think in a way it proves that those characters like that were a viable product. And Future State John was one thing, but then like where we are with Son of Kal-El, even though it's great, I still wish we had Young John with Damien. Because, you know, it's... Now John's older than Damien, and it just kind of throws stuff into a weird place. So, you still there? Oh, it just went quiet. Sorry. Could be the heat. I the am ear. still here. Ah, the ear. But hey, we have a finale to talk about. Are you ready? So here we go. I am ready. Definitely ready to talk okay. about this finale. Superman and Lois, season two, episode 15. Waiting for Superman. By Chris Daughtry. <laughs> um, My Chris Daughtry. Wow. <laughs> what an episode, right? What What are your thoughts? Just you go. I'm, I'm done talking. Take it. Roll with it. Go. Oh, I mean, yeah, what an episode. It was awesome. Um, You know, we talked about them kind of saving their budget in the last episode. Um, And one little nugget I want to drop since our our last episode was kind of quick. We did we did miss uh, like the best line of the episode. We didn't talk about where he says um, where he's talking about. where Sam is saying, if you made a mistake, that this isn't your fault. And if you made a mistake, it was saving me. And, uh, um, Superman's Clark says, um, uh, saving a life is Superman. never a mistake. And, and, and I like how, I like how they actually separated that because he said, um, saving a life is never a mistake. And he paused at the end of the sentence. And then he says, especially yours. So like they gave him the, the, the perfect Superman line and then, you know, followed it up with what, what was mm-hmm. meaningful toward, uh, to the show. It was, I mean, it's powerful, powerful writing. So, yeah. Um, but we, we open up and, mm-hmm. you know, they definitely spent their budget here. Um, we've got, uh, the two earths, um, being merged. Uh, Allie is, now she's out of the void, actually, like, trying to physically 
uh, merge the Earths because they're like in the same universe now. And uh, um, Clark, I mean, there it's it's pretty much the end. You know, uh, people are blipping back and forth between the Earths. Um, the, some people from from the normal Earth are jumping over to the Bizarro Earth, and and vice versa. Um, buildings and things are changing. Um, things is things are starting to get pretty crazy because like yeah. vehicles are coming through, but not people driving them. So a vehicle appears out of nowhere and almost runs down Lana and Sarah. And right. And then the person wasn't in there, but what happened to the person like driving, however many, you know, 55 mile an hour. And then your vehicle disappears. <laughs> Like you, that you just hitting the pavement at fifty five miles an hour. <laughs> like that, that's just. <laughs> I thought about that when they when they showed that. that the person yeah. wasn't in there. Um. <laughs> well, then Sam kind of said the same thing too. Just before that, um, maybe it was after, but he says, um, "I he said, lucky I got out of my jeep because my jeep disappeared." So. Like if he was driving or if he was sitting in the seat and the jeep disappeared, he just fall to the ground. It's like, it's like the rapture. It's, <laughs> like, it's, it's left behind. Where's Nick Cage? He's waiting for Superman. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's waiting for Superman. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's like everything's going crazy. Um, Natalie is. Natalie is determined yes. to get to her dad. Um, she gets a she gets a message from the void. It's very broken up, so um, she doesn't get the entire message. Uh, so she takes the rescue pod into this the was, void to go get her dad a, to go get this John was a Henry. Great scene. It was almost a kick in the face, but it was a great scene. It's a really good scene because you know those scenes they're 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 filmed in green screen, you know, close up and everything, so they have to they have to emote, they have to have that um emotion in their voice cuz all you're seeing is their face in that heads up display. And and the fact that she gets there and John's like, "Did you bring all the XK?" and she's like, "What?" He's like, "Get my message. I told you to bring the XK." In the, in the shuttle, and she's like, I thought the shuttle was for you to get out. And then they're basically there in the void. No way of getting back and nothing to do. Um, they do come up with a really cool, interesting plan to um, drain all of the XK that's like powering their defenses mm -hmm. for their suits. And put it into the pod and send it into the portals um, to collapse the portals. Um, which they said worked. So I think I think it disrupted Allie for yeah. a time being. You know, maybe not maybe not separated the the Earths or anything, but it it disrupted her. Um, which we'll have to get back there because she enters the void to go after them. Um, but uh, Clark determined to save the day. The only thing he can think of is to have Tal, who is back on Earth. He Somehow he got transported to the Bizarro Earth last we saw him. No. No, the, so, the the last time we saw him, not quite like, sure. Maybe was when it was he just the left the fortress. It was the Bizarro Tal that she took all the power from. Yeah, it was the Bizarro was, Tal was, that, but they didn't know where Tal after he, was after they destroyed, after the, they destroyed he the. He's been doing his own thing. Has he? I thought he said he was on the other maybe, Earth. Maybe, maybe he just was. was blipping back and forth. Um, maybe some, yeah, maybe, maybe one of those two. So, um, but either way, Tal shows up and of course he does. He wants to help. 
Um, he's kind of, yeah, I mean, he's kind of having some somewhat of a redemptive moment here. I mean, he's still where we find out later on, he's still around, he's still alive. So is, is he going to have any more nefarious plans moving forward? We don't know, but in this, in this episode, he kind of has a, um, a, a redemptive moment where he's there to help save the world. And he wants to, he says that his family, Clark and his family are the only, or Cal and his family are the only yeah, people he cares about moment. on earth. And he wants, to, yeah. And he wants to, he wants to help save the day. So Clark's idea is Which to have Tal throw yeah, him it's, it's into a very the sun. Idea. We've seen it on Smallville and stuff before. Like, throw me in the sun. Oh, ab- absolutely. I mean, yeah. It's, Are you sure, brother? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Uh, I mean, he, you know, we. How many? how many scenes do we have of him reaching for just some sunlight? Mm-hmm to start to recharge, you know, it, it works that fast. It works that well. Um, and then, and then how many other scenes is there where he flies up above the atmosphere. So that way he can get those unfiltered sun rays. And that's like what really charges him up. Um, so it was pretty cool. Uh, awesome effect, you know, the, the heat effect coming off of the sun while they were flying. The only thing was Clark uh, has zero out there power. near it. Oh, I do like when Tal goes and gets his his suit for him and brings it to him to change into. Yeah, and like Brian's, it looks horrible. Unlike Brian's, but like, that was pretty. How cool. is Tal's suit so good looking <laughs> and Superman's his butt? <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Well, I think I think they really want to have that shoulder to waist ratio with Superman, you know, give, give him that really that that V look that like Henry just yeah. nailed in Man of Steel. Um, <laughs> but get so I think he's just he's just built out a little more. Um, but yeah, the texture and the design, the the texture. And, and like the crest and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I thought that too, he has no power, but he no, flew him no. into outer space you know, but, and out towards I don't know. the sun. Yeah. Hold your breath for the, you know, 25 seconds. It f- takes us to fly here. And, you know, hopefully when we pass the atmosphere, you know, you won't either burn to death on, on exit or He's you just... won't freeze to death in space. Hopefully, the closer you get to the sun, maybe your powers will start to come Tal's back and, and you won't aura. die in the is. vacuum just of like, space. You know, just like, uh, you know, yeah, there like, you go. Um, and I, I do love that's when he's it. Like, you, you nailed it. Tal's like, Cal, he's like, yes, I love you too. And, you know, uh, Superman gets tossed into the sun. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, as <laughs> simple as that. Um, he's charging up like it really gets him. It's it's kind of cool because he's like burning and stuff. You know, they're doing the they're doing the effects. So his skin, his face, his hands are starting to burn, but he's really getting some. <laughs> he's really getting um. Uh, it's it, like the the sun has like almost it has lines through the suit that yeah. all like converge some, to the s on the chest on put it, like they that light up the lines in the suit like that like it looked awesome i'm not i'm not a completely against it that, did you know? it, um it did look pretty cool yeah you know the second time i watched it and i, I was watching it here i was thinking kind of like that those lines coming through there almost makes it look more uh-huh. um, new 52 yeah, see where everybody's suit got more lines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it works. It works. He's uh, he stops, he stops writhing in pain and all of his, uh, all of his burns heal up. 
and he gets all powered up and he can hear Allie going after John and Natalie in the void. And from the sun, he beats her to Natalie and, and John to save them from the void and drops them off at the farm. And keeps going. He shoots out into the atmo- into into the, back out into space, um, and confronts Allie, and she's um, and and she comes into contact with him, and she starts siphoning his power. And this time, it's it's all yellow. It's not just um, that white energy that it's always been that she's taken from everybody else. Um, and you know what? I don't. We haven't talked about it. What do you think? of the villain of the season basically being yeah uh, a version of the parasite you know we hadn't talked about it because we kind of were not like, sure where to, they were going and yeah it's the ver- it's a take on the parasite twins and i think it's neat uh in a way but it's like parasite but also its own thing at the same time because I just, you know, it's. Well, as we know it, Parasite has always been like a throwaway right. villain, except it. for the animated series. What? Parasite on Supergirl, you know? Parasite on Smallville. And. Yeah. But they're like one and dones. You and know? This, and this kind of um, was like. Not only was a parasite of draining your life force, which I kind of wish she had done more, but also your spirit, who you are, you know, preying on the weak. Um, and as you know, not jumping ahead too far, but as we get later, when Lo- when Lois confronts and asks them if they ever felt whole when they were together, now that they're separated, you know, how much of Allie's stuff was an act. Did she ever really care? Was it just about her? Like what? And who is she? Well, when you, yeah, I mean, well, when you think about it, when you correlate, like what, ha- what has happened? Um, like, what do they call like people who are like cult leaders and um, brainwashers and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Like they, they actually can, they actually, um, compare them those types of people to a parasite they can manipulate and get everything they want and need from everybody around them like that's what she did all the time you know so it actually it actually fits like her character arc through the entire season but i just didn't see it coming like that i didn't see her being a version of the parasite Mm -hmm. but they used it so many times they used the name I was like, well, that absolutely makes sense. And, you know, he, it, that character can be a big threat. I mean, that was the, that's been a villain in, in the animated. It was the villain in the new Man, that was, uh, man of Tomorrow. It's a great, I think Parasite's a uh, great animated movie. Superman villain, you know, because that was kind of how they did it um, in, what do you call it? Uh, Jeff John's Secret Origin. Where Parasite was one of the villains. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's true. And it's and it's really... Um, they really made Parasite a massive yeah. threat. You know, not just taking Superman's abilities and trying to, like, take over the world. But, like, the the... Also mm-hmm. combining the bizarro aspect, um, you know, siphoning powers and life force to be able to make other people like the entire planet, like, like I, them. Um, um, crap. I just totally forgot what I was going to say. You just, you're just too awesome, James. Now, what do you think about the ultimate punch <laughs> <laughs> where the scene where he, uh, which one the the Earth splitting punch or the yeah, when he um, splits her is awesome. the one where he, he split her? The, uh, you know, uh, he did the what do you call it? Like a overpower 
gave her too much energy she couldn't handle then popped her apart and then he you know spins around the planet kind of starting to put an energy uh build between the two earths as they're combining and then they look like a tie pod and then he just flies down a like i say he didn't actually punch it he kind of like went to the earth and like transferred his power his energy you know disrupting the energy flow of the two worlds together yeah i, I well what he did, yeah i mean what i think is is what happened you know he did the same thing he did to ally you know he he um he disrupted it with all that energy made it unstable the the combination and and through that speed and distribution of his energy as he was passing around which was really cool because he's going real fast and it's like round flat round flat round flat as he's passing all the way around the combining earths um as, as he's crossing all those different horizons uh but yeah i think it's same thing just you know as as soon as he all that energy was ready he released it into both planets and separated them. Which was aw- it's just a visually one of the best looking Superman shots of all time. And then, yeah, um, it was freaking sweet. So, following up that scene, they're having fireworks, and I love that one of the fireworks goes off, and it's the Superman symbol. But I, I do wish there had been a couple of shots right. of maybe like stuff around the world, <laughs> you know, like this wasn't just affecting Smallville. Like it was affecting the world. So, you know, we have this like celebration in Smallville we cut to. And it's Miracle Monday. Nice Elliot S. Magan shout out um, to his book, which I'm going to be reading soon. I have to finish the first one. Um, But it's like the whole world should be celebrating this, not just Smallville. Oh, I mean that's that's true. I mean I think the whole we need that's, like a that's Star kind Wars of Return to, of Jedi ending, you know? you know, where we see all the planets celebrating. We need to see all the major cities in the world <laughs> celebrating. Right. Oh yeah, that I mean that makes absolute sense. Um I mean I guess I guess the reason Smallville just Where's feels centered on it is because, you know, that's that's where the portal was, that's where Superman you know, kind of has saved and the day. It's interesting. Like, I love that when he saves the day, there's still like a good 10 minutes or so left of the episode. It's, it's, it, you know. Oh, yeah. So it's not some done. of the high points to kind of hit here on get your thoughts on. One, Lois telling Chrissy, go. Um, so, uh, I mean, we can't, we can't have these shows without some people Mm -hmm. knowing, you know, it's just, you you just, you can't have these shows without people knowing it doesn't work like that anymore. Um, I mean, you really have to suspend your disbelief. And um, so I think she was, you know, she's supposed to be a good friend to Lois. Um, This season has been kind of a roller coaster with her. Yes. Um, I did like the way it ended. So I did like the way it ended. I mean, I want to say that definitely, you know, I like it um, to boil it down. I liked it. I I think with this, the way this season has gone um, and, and the strain that they gave the, the, the strength of the story for the entire season of the strain on relationships, the friends and the family and the, and the, 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 the loving relationships, boyfriend and girlfriend, um, husband and wife. It's been a big issue this season, um, in many ways. So for, for Lois to do that, you know, I mean, you know, that they, that Uh it's, it's been approved, you know, they, they trust her to do it. Um, and that's I mean, after thing, everything she's everything gone through she's this gone season. Through. And for her to understand Lois and not think that Lois is withholding or Lois is cheating or lying, 
for Lois's integrity to their jobs after everything they've been through, it comes to a respect thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think she's definitely, I think definitely think that Lois is giving Chrissy that respect, you know? Um, Cause Chrissy had always had that and reverence all- for Lois. Um, but especially through this season, they it kind of sense. tarnish yeah, that. All, all clicks into place and secrets. Makes sense. Yeah, very, very. the The writing is top notch. You know, um, connecting the the stories of the entire season. Um, uh, the the way they have. I, I think it's all overlapped really well, intertwined what? really well. Okay, so the next major. Uh, beat and we're going to kind of tweak this and hold off on one thing so if you know what I mean just hold off for a second Diggle talks to John okay. and Diggle tells John Henry John Diggle talks to John Henry there's now a third John <laughs> um, Yes, that he wanted to see if he's interested that they're going after Bruno Mannheim because Bruno Mannheim's the one that killed this earth's John Henry What do you think about just the name of Bruno Mannheim? Um, I mean the the name drop. I was like, sweet inner gang Bruno Mannheim. Maybe, hopefully, an apoco- apocalyptic connection. Um, doesn't mean apocalypse has to be the villain in season three, but having inner gang, you could easily, especially if it's a fifteen episode season again. Um, and I have a hard time believing that it wouldn't get picked up for its fourth season already. Um, as, as long as, you know, let's just cross our fingers that it's gonna, I see it getting picked up for a fourth season, barring Mm -hmm. any, you know, business stuff. Uh, I could see them definitely dropping apocalypse teases in season three. To maybe have it being an over, an overwhelming threat, which works. I mean, if somebody else isn't going to pick up the ball and run with you know Dark Side, might as well be Superman Lois. Okay, Cushing. Family. Oh, for sure. Just um, their story in this episode. Thoughts, and then we'll get to the big one. Actually, we'll we'll skip. We'll jump. We'll do something else. Then we'll get to the big one. So Cushing family. Um, so I'll, I mean, I'll start with Lana, Lana and Kyle. Um, I, I, I think the resolution was just fine. I think the resolution was well done, uh, justifiable. Um, Lana kind of, you know, Lana, Lana being truthful, Lana being, um, firm in how she feels. Um, you know, they, they don't, they haven't beat around the bush when it comes to, um, these stories, these relationships. Um, they don't drag, they don't drag things out, which has been really nice for the storytelling, uh, of this show. So the way that they have their last dance was, very sweet, very, very well written, very adult. It was very good. Um, and then we had Clark standing over there um, and they didn't show it and they didn't um, have to tell mm-hmm. you, but he heard. He knows that that their family is still broken. You know, he says, I just wish everybody could be and then Chris as happy as out. I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah, that's crazy, yeah. and I, I love it though um well i mean when you when you don't when you couldn't picture that at, in the least when it's like the most ridiculous concept you could think of you know that clark Kent is superman because of the persona that they've perfected and built around him um to now you look at him and see this this uh, god standing there 
You know, like it's, 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 it, yeah. I mean, it's a lot to process and, and how humbling that, that would, how humbling that could make you feel to, to see somebody so down to earth and caring and loving and protecting. Um, and he's, he's this, mm-hmm. this farm kid, this farm boy. Still living on he's the just, farm, just, raising you know, his children. Mid thirties, year old man who moved back home <laughs> to his parents' house. <laughs> right? What? Yeah. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> right. So uh, it's it's definitely a, a it definitely warp your view. You kind of would have you you almost have trouble um, reconciling. And then, okay. That fact. <laughs> so do you think it's just inferred that Sarah knows that Jordan is Superman's son? Because it's like, he's, he's telling her like at the end, like they're talking during Miracle Monday when all the kids are running around dressed as steel and Superman. And we actually get to see some merch with kids wearing red capes with the yellow S on the back. Um, so that needs to come in. That's we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Later. Um, Well, when we talk about the kids, there's a baby who is dressed like uh, like an old school looking Superman pajamas, but with like a crocheted little bottoms on and like a crocheted cape yes, and a was. cap. And, and I'm very surprised that there adorable. wasn't like a shot of like a, <laughs> a Superman stand with like a QR code that you could freeze and scan and it takes you to a special DC store where you can buy everything that's, you know, in this episode. Because most, most of it's stuff I've seen online. That you know, would be some place or another uh, to purchase. Okay, because you know Jordan's telling her about the powers and everything, so I feel like it's kind of inferred that Sarah's going to know that Jordan's actually Superman's son and everything, but it's never in the episode straight up told to her. It's just it's just interesting. Um, yeah. Now. The episode ends where Clark, they go on the Kent family fishing trip. And Clark's in a sweet ass sweater. Um, and he tosses a stone into the water and says, wait, wait. And basically the, a new fortress of solitude is being built in the water. And it looks like our classic fortress of solitude. Yeah. Well, you know, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, uh, one thing that was interesting in Bendis' run was the relocation of the fortress because it was destroyed in the Arctic. And he relocated it in the Bermuda Triangle. Being out in the water and how, you know, Clark says, John, my mother can't wait to meet you. There's some Kryptonian tech inside that you're going to be want to toil around with. And we have the new family fortress. So, that's pretty much the episode, minus one big thing that we've come to talk about. James, Mr. Cole, we've been doing this for a while. How do you feel that we now know that Superman and Lois is on a different Earth than Prime Earth? Okay, cool. We had the same thing we both wanted to talk about. Um, So, in this episode we get a scene where the boys are freaking out that their dad's going to die. This is bef- this is when he gets thrown into the sun. Um, and uh, he... Uh, I'm sorry, I kind of got confused. Uh, my thoughts got twisted a little bit. Um, the boys are freaking out and he, he stops them. He calms them down. And he says, as the head of the DOD, he's gotten to see a lot of things. He's gotten to see, um, other worlds, other um, heroes, other heroes, the, the, the leagues that, um, that save them. Sorry. The cat just knocked over my books. Um, yeah, he says, uh, the, the leagues, the heroes that protect them, 
um, that he's gotten to see other worlds, and that all they have on this on their world is Superman, is their dad. And thank God, because he is the finest of all of the heroes um, that he's that he's had the the privilege to to look in on. Um, so I mean, in the in the episode, that's kind of all that we get. Um, but that's where we get that this Superman is the only yep. hero yeah. on this earth. Um. So, I mean, it's real quick and you can almost miss it the way that it's dropped in there. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's... So, with the quality that this show has produced in the last two seasons, um, and it not being... I think it's, I think it's a good thing because it's not, gonna, it's not being weighed down by... Anything now, all, that the Arrowverse had it, done. I hate that people are saying, oh, um, it's not in the Arrowverse. We do n- Technically, it is. Okay? And you know why? Because the Arrowverse shows, established in Crisis, that everything is in the Arrowverse. <laughs> okay? Titans. Titans. Stargirl. <laughs> yeah, basically. Doom Patrol. All sh- Swamp Thing. All shown at the end as part of the new multiverse. So... It's just this show is not set. Uh, yeah, um, the the right film Justice League was so know, with with Ezra. This just cameo. means it's not on Prime Earth. It's it's on an Earth that's part of the new multiverse. I just wanted to clarify that because I hate I love arguing with people. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's the the thing that the the thing that Crisis did on the TV was just put all their characters on one world, but it's still, there's still the multiverse that exists. It wasn't, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same collapse, the multiverse, and there's only one universe. Um, there's, theirs was different. It just put yep. all of their characters into one world. So, I mean, it's, it's an adaptation <laughs> of what crisis so, on infinite earths. Is. I, you know, I'm fine with it. I think after all the, you know, with all the shows being canceled and everything that's happened, it, it's fine. It explains Lucy much better. It explains Sam better. Uh, explains the fortress, the absence of Supergirl. Um, it gives it all a new coat of paint to do with what they want. Um, the only thing is now that means that. For some reason, Superman never showed up in Supergirl season six because there still is a Prime Earth Superman. <laughs> okay, yes. so the whole time we're watching yes, Supergirl season true. six, like where's <laughs> Superman? Oh, that's you know he's doing Superman Lois. Oh, okay, okay, and then we're like, does that work? Like, what's going on? And then we're like, oh no, this this is a different Earth. I'm like, oh okay, cool. Like if if. <laughs> Yeah, if Lex Luthor was if Lex Luthor was threatening the planet, Superman would get involved. If he is on Earth and Lex Luthor is threatening the planet, Superman is getting involved. So the only explanation is that Earth's Superman yeah, that, was off world <laughs> during the events now. of Supergirl uh, season six. You know, I listen to Todd That's Holding it. talk That's about it. <laughs> Dingle's lines. No, no. He talked about well, like, they wanted to do so, this sorry, early sorry. on because they changed things from the original pilot script and then as things went on. And he talked about trying to clarify that the Diggle we met, you know, is a doppelganger Diggle. It's not the same Diggle. Um, and that there were other heroes like Oliver, but there were no super powered heroes. So when Sam talks about, you know, heroes, he's talking about super powered heroes, the big leagues. And all there is for superpowers is Superman. But there had been like, you know, Oliver Queen, small scale heroes. And I'm like, OK, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go with it. OK, I'm going to go with it. I still don't think the Diggle lines work from the first season for what you're trying to establish here. Because they talk about crisis and knowing about crisis. And if we look at it, the Flash 
the flash hasn't even discovered the new multiverse yet. Um, so I think there's a little bit of problems there, but I'm just going to go with it. Okay. Um, it, it, it'll all work out in the end. <laughs> so, you know, you rack your brain too hard. Then, I mean, you can poke holes in any fictional uh, universe you, know, you want. You have, you have you good solid about. writing. You can you do a lot <laughs> of some good writing. Um, but anyways, and then, so that brings me to the question, like with Diggle, why not just go ahead and make him John Stewart? Why even make him Diggle? If he's going to be a new earth, why not just introduce himself as John? But that's where I feel like they weren't quite sure what they were doing. And, you know, we don't know how things were filmed in order with what DC would give them permission, yada, yada, yada. But hey, James, what do you want to see in season three? What do I want to see in season three? Um, oh, dang. Uh, you know, I, I had thought of some stuff. Um, so, I mean, we're getting season three. Uh, you know, I definitely want to see Bruno Mannheim. Um, I want to see Inner Gang. Um, I kind of want to see, like, like the introductory story we get of Steel um, after the death of Superman. He is going after Inner Gang. He's going after arms dealers. Um, mostly people who are using his weapon designs, but yeah. So that'll be, that'll be kind of cool. Um, uh, let's see, like super powered. I, man, so it really yeah. opens it up, you know, because it really opens it up to what, what we can see knowing that this is a different earth because the version of Superman, when we came to Supergirl or when, when Tyler first showed up on Supergirl was, um, Superman who had stopped Zod, Superman who had stopped Lex, Superman who had died from doomsday yeah. and came so here, back. Here, I'll give you my rundown real quick. Okay. Season three. Ready? <clears throat> Superman gets a new costume. Yeah. We, we fix the sh the neckline and the symbol. Hey. Jordan gets a costume more in line with John Kent's original co costume in the um Pete Ross shows up in Smallville comes back and kindles a relationship with Lana. Uh Steel gets a new suit with the symbol and cape. Uh we get some episodes that go back to Metropolis. The Daily Planet reaches back out to Lois and Clark because the Daily Planet, remember, was owned by Morgan Edge. Morgan Edge is technically gone because uh, we didn't hit this, but Tal's on Bizarro Earth somehow. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, and so Morgan Edge is gone. So someone has to own the Daily Planet. So the Daily Planet will redispatch out to Clark to be like a correspondent. So Clark starts working at the Daily Planet again, like correspondent. So we get a couple episodes in Metropolis, you know, taking some of the things out of Smallville. So we're not just in Smallville always. Um, and I want to see John Cryer show up for at least an episode or two as Lex Luthor. Or like maybe get this like a three episode arc or something because now we can have Lex... Same actor, new coat of paint, as Hell being put it, and then I want. Yeah, I think I think he would really be great to go back to what he Four. did in season. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Four? Four when he first showed up. Yeah, before, they, before he went the all writing went too long. He stayed and ew, out goofy. Well. He stayed too long. Um, and then I want at the end of the episode either one of two things to happen. Yeah. I want the portal to open and out walks Colin Salmon as Zod. Or a portal opens and Sega L drops out. And somehow we, we kind of tie it back to Krypton 
and where Krypton left us and Segel time traveled and ended up too soon. And Tyler's, you know, in his new suit gets the cape with the S on the back. And that's my, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be amazing to tie Krypton to, um, to Superman and Lois because, uh, uh I mean, you could see Tyler right. being uh, exactly. his grandson, like, you know, you could see that. And then, um, and then, and then Krypton was such a fantastic show that was itself an amalgam of so many things Krypto, uh, Kryptonian from so many different versions of Superman. Yeah. So it yes, was it like was. an amazing Krypton. Um, and that's like what we've got with this show is an amalgamation of so many versions of Superman. So um, Todd Helbing, to I know you're listening what we've to got the show. Now. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm available for a job. Okay. I I have my writing chops ready to go. <laughs> Send me a line. I'll, I'll work cheap too. Work from home. I'll work cheap. Okay. Just, here I am. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ohio's not far I'm from Canada. Superman. Okay, we're right here. Um, but yeah, so that's that's our take. If anyone has anything, shoot us a message. Yeah, great episode, great finale to a really good season. Um, you know, I I would love to because uh, we're not getting any Superman and Lois again yeah, until twenty thirteen. I suspect uh, probably about February. January, February, March, somewhere in there. Well, you know, it might just be like this year. Start it in January and, you know, th- three and a half months worth of episodes yeah, and like take six months to drop it. <laughs> I don't want that either. That is the only thing that has killed this show. If you binge no, this show, I bet it is it spectacular. Yes, I I will in the next six months rewatch the entire show first two, these two seasons. Hey, we're on to press pause back. and hear a few words from our other podcast on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works: we read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to The Krypton Report. Hey, everybody. Welcome to The Krypton Report podcast. I have with me special guest he's back it's been a little bit but we planned it that way we have mr levi what's up man how's it going how you doing i'm doing good we uh we had planned to have you back we had talked about this but then we decided you know what uh just because of scheduling stuff that we would have you back for the finale um so we're gonna jump in here and kind of talk about this but since we last chatted how what is your sense for the whole season kind of been uh, the overall, I think the season started off really strong. Um, the, as we've talked about before, the Kyle and Lana storyline kind of lost me there in the middle for a while. Um, but I think it rebounded nicely and I think the season overall ended super strong, pun intended. Um, <laughs> that finale was one of the best pieces of Superman media I've seen. So, uh, yeah, yeah, well. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> as an overarching for the season, I think it was a really good season. I know the the worst thing that happens to this show is the breaks. Yes, <laughs> and I've said before, I don't mind like the the typical mid season break because of the holidays. That's fine because you know there's always a lot going on in people's lives. Um, there's staggering holidays and all that, so I don't I don't mind that break. Okay. But it's the, hey, here's two episodes. Here, okay, here's this. Here's this. Um, I, that gets to me because it kills the momentum. It's like, 
I think the sweet spot is you need to do, you need to film everything, then do it kind of like streamers do, but do it once a week. Um, yeah. Keep the momentum, keep the conversation, you know, and just, you know, a, an example of this in a way is, um, you know, my, my buddy said the craziest thing was when Stranger, Stranger Things season three dropped, everybody benched it over July uh, that, that weekend before the July weekend. We all watched it. We all talked about it. And then that was it. It was done. And it just disappeared. And we have other shows that come out weekly from a streamer that keeps us in com- conversating about them. But then this show, it comes on. It's strong. It's building its hype. We love it. We're so excited that it goes on hiatus. And I understood like during like when everything was coming back you know, from the pandemic and stuff, there was these weird release schedules and things. Um, but I think it's time now that we, we course correct these hiatuses and are you watching the flash at all? I'm not, I'm just starting to rewatch, uh, the early seasons of flash and arrow. So I'm hoping to keep the momentum and get through the flash. Finally. Well, I know they tweaked like this last hiatus was supposed to be, um, you know, so that the same week, Superman and Lois ended the same week the Flash did. And they kept saying there was going to be a special appearance on the Flash. So I thought it was going to be something big. And then, yeah, there were a couple, you could quote unquote, guest appearances on the Flash finale. But they're not people that I really see as other than people who would guest appear on that show, if that makes sense. Like, there are people that's been on the show before that almost feel like they are part of the show. So... It didn't really have any weight that I thought it was going to have. Um, uh, yeah. So anyways, all I have to say, <laughs> I'm really enjoying the show. I think, you know, it, for the most part, it has its ups and downs, and that's just the nature of the beast. Um, you know, the, the drama, and sometimes you want more, but I, I really love the show, and even... The stuff that I don't care for, it doesn't bother me enough to deter from the show. Same. When this show is running on all cylinders, I think it's one of the best shows currently out there. Um, And even when it's not firing on all cylinders, it's still above a lot of other shows that I watch. So I I agree. Um, I think the 15 episodes work for the show's benefit. I think that's the sweet spot that they found. Not too many and not too little. So I'm I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, building into this final how have you liked, let's say, Jordan's arc this this season? Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um, especially these last few episodes. Um I wish there was a little less uh, 16-year-old, or what are they? They're like, they're like 15. 15-year-old 15 first love of his life wants to tell her all the secrets right away. But I think overall, we've seen a lot of growth from him, um, especially in the episodes leading up to the finale. Um, the moments with Clark up at the fortress and all that have been just really great and really I think what a lot of us wanted to see and hope to see from like Superman media when they introduced kids for him, like seeing him be a father and seeing him be a father to a kid with powers. So it's been a really nice arc for Jordan, I think, overall this season. All right. Now, what about Jonathan? Uh, Kind of the same with Jonathan, the uh, protecting the girlfriend over the course of the season by keeping the secret that she was selling drugs. Uh, felt like that dragged on for a bit too long, but it did give some really great scenes of Clark being the upset parent for a change. Um, and kind of that same, how would Look Clark can't be a parent to someone? So it, it's led to some really great say, scenes, even if I don't think podcast, the story itself is the best for uh, On the Press Jonathan. Play Podcast Network. But, I agree. I think it also helped lend to when we meet John L. Yeah. Of, of kind of that mirror of what, what could, what my son could turn out to be if I'm not a better parent? Yeah, definitely. If, if I neglect my child the way that this other Clark had, this is the type of person my son could turn out to be. 
And I think, you know, like I agree with you. I think part of it did drag out. And then, but the worst part is like, for me, it's like, I, I, I really am going to sit down and rewatch this season because I really want to watch it straight with yeah. all, every, with all of the stops. Cause I feel like the stops do hinder a lot of certain character growth or momentums. Um, you know, we were both talked about how we were first time we chatted, we were both talking about how good of a character Kyle was and then bam. Um, and you know, that's been a rocky up and down because Kyle's like, I'm, I'm curious where they're going to take him, what they're going to do with him. You know, the, the Cushing is being kind of this opposite of the Kents. Um, will he get faded out in the story? Um, I, I don't know, but where might he go down the road? I have a prediction and we'll get to um, we'll get to thoughts for next season when we get to the end. Um, how have you enjoyed Clark's big kind of rest of his arc this season? It's been interesting because the whole initial premise of the show going back to season one was they wanted to move to Smallville to like slow down and raise their kids, especially uh, with the chance that they could be developing powers and all that. And they didn't get to do a ton of that the first season, but they've done a lot of it this season. Mm -hmm. And like really seeing him dive into like having to discipline his kids and like having to make sure, you know, that his son's not selling drugs and all that. So it's got that like good family drama, especially for him um, seemingly taking on kind of the bad cop role in the parenting this season. Um, and then of course, uh, you know, him having to deal with the cost of secrets in his life and how those affect the people around him who don't know the secrets. It's been just super interesting to see. And you know how I feel about his portrayal as Clark, not just Superman. It, I, he's just nailing it. Every time we watch, I just turn to my wife and I'm like, he is killing it as Clark Kent. So that was, um, you know, a question I've asked a lot of people when we first kind of interviewed them is like, um, who's your favorite live action Clark? And it seems that Tyler is coming up more and more um, with his Clark. And it, it's justly, it's justly due. Um, now the last big thing and we'll dive into the finale is what were your thoughts and feelings towards how did you react? And what do you think about the whole Clark telling Lana situation? Oh man, I loved it. And I loved her reaction because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Um, I think so much, especially as someone who grew up watching Smallville, like you, like everyone on that show, when they find out that Clark is Superman or Clark has power, they're just like, oh, well, that's cool. And then they just move on. So to see her have that kind of like, oh, wow, you have powers. And then, oh, wow, you've been hiding this from me for 20 years. And that really hurts. I, I thought it was just super interesting and a super interesting way to do it. You know, the only thing I did not like about that is when Lois messaged Lana and she like lied about it to Kyle. Yeah. And then she yelled about, you made me lie. Mm, no, because Lois is her friend. You know, Kyle said, who was that? All she had to do was either say, not your business or it's Lois. I'll talk to her later. Yeah. That's not lying. You know what I'm saying? That's not lying at all. Um, but she chose to lie about it. Now, when Sarah finds out, and I love how Sarah finds out, and I love that she's processing it in the last episode, and she's like, wait, this is what he wants to tell me? If I hadn't, I broke up with him. If I had known, like, I wouldn't have broke up with him. This is what it was going, you know, she's like putting it together, and then she looks at her mom like, you knew. And then right away, she's like, you can't tell your dad. And then Sarah's paused when Kyle showed because she learns, like, in that moment, like, what the secret means because and i don't even think they sarah if unless i missed it okay i don't think sarah knows yet or they haven't directly said to her that he's not only does he have powers he's superman's son yeah i i'm guessing it's gonna be inferred that's what i was thinking but i don't think it was ever like straight up said like yeah i'm superman's son i'm not gonna there was the moment where he turns and, you know, he fires up the eyes and tells her to run. And I turned to my wife and I said, I really hope this is how she finds out. And I hope it's not like a Smallville. She gets knocked on the head and gets amnesia for the last two hours. 
like I hope this sticks because it was such a like a powerful way like to do it because he's trying to protect her and she's not really listening and he realizes she needs to go like right now. So I love that scene like that because I love that Lana walks in and she looks at him. He gives her kind of this head nod like, no, I didn't say anything. I'm respecting your wishes, you know, and then doppelganger Lana shows up and he just is like, you know, yells the run and has the, you know, his eyes light up and he turns. And I, I told uh, my wife, I was like, I bet in a slight way, he's going to enjoy this fight. Cause some of this like pent up anger he has towards Lana about not letting him tell Sarah, he's technically getting to punch Lana, but it's a different Lana. He is getting to release some of that anger. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that, but that's a great point. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I said this in, in, in conversation was, you know, what have been an interesting stake they could have uh, brought in a little earlier is they mentioned John L mentions that when the worlds merge, Superman basically cease to exist because there's no one from, for him to merge with. And I was like, wouldn't it have been interesting is on, if on the other bizarro world there wasn't a jordan it was just jonathan and then that raises the stakes of we of trying to stop this so that you know jordan exists or it also shows clark and lois as parents over there having just one son how they can mess things up i don't know it was just a thought um but that's that's us trying to catch up you know having talked a little bit here and there yeah but let's let's get into the finale um how do you, do you want to, how do you just want to say your thoughts? Do you want to go beat by beat? Like, I, I'm good for whatever, uh, this finale uh, for being an hour long, it was pretty jam packed. So going, uh, beat by beat might be the way to do it. I think. And, uh, I assume like the, the title for the episode is waiting for Superman. So I had to sample Chris Daughtry, sing it and send it to, uh, James. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, So let's see. So at the end of the last episode, Kyle got, as I put, dusted. And um, I like that. I like that Tal arrives quickly. Like he shows up. He's there. He's ready to help. Um, and then we have Lois is on the Bizarro world. Sam's there. And then she runs into Kyle. And that Bizarro Lois is on the regular world, which made me think like how exactly the merging stuff's working. Um, you know, cause like they're flip flopping the people into the worlds, but it's not, it doesn't look like the people are actually starting to merge together. Yeah. Like, you know, they're, they're not there together at the same time. It's like one's on one earth, one's on the other. At, um, other than say, cause then, you know, I brought up, is there a Sarah, you know, because on the other earth, Lana married Tal. Yeah. That was a thought I had while watching it too, is the, the Cushing family doesn't seem to exist on the uh, bizarro world. So, um, so we have the, you know, the, the, like, like a lot of shows kind of do is like the penultimate is like the build up for the finale. And I think these two episodes did it perfectly. There was, I didn't feel like I was wasting my time last week watching an episode but this episode definitely had the 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 feels and the and um and everything in it we have ally not in the void um she's basically out in space and we have tau flies up to stop her he's gonna try to save the day and he gets basically taken down Again, and, yeah, <laughs> and Jordan flies up there and and, base, and and gets him, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, and Tall I think's had a great arc the second half of this season. So yes, he, yes, he has. I'm speaking of Tal. What I think maybe it'd be easier if we just stay with characters. Okay, um, I like that you know he helps Superman and. You know, Clark tells him, you're going to fly me into the sun. Um, that's what I think that's what mother was trying to tell us. And it's like, and if something doesn't work, it, 
you know, there's still you. And uh, he does it and everything. And, and then he like disappears. And I'm not, I don't know how I feel with him being on Bizarro Earth when the, when it ends. I honestly don't really like it because, yeah, it's kind of a fresh start for him in a way. But there already was a version of him on that earth. But it's like, how does he process the language and everything and have powers under the red sun? Um, it just kind of doesn't make as much sense to me as much as like if he just came back to earth and tried to like start over or, or something like that. I yeah. Think, I didn't, I loved his arc. I loved like my prediction was that he was going to die helping save the day or that he would end up saving some character or something like um, Lois or whatever. And he would die saving them. Um, and he didn't. He gifted the boys trucks, which is pretty sweet. And I guess, I, you know, I like that he's a, he's out there to come back. But him being on Bizarro Earth, I just, I'm not a fan of. You go. I feel like the Bizarro Earth ending for him is a way to write him out of the show without eliminating him for the future. And I think that's the main reason, because I think story-wise... For a kind of a two season arc for that character, it'd make more sense for him to sacrifice himself. Um, I'd say probably saving Lois after the scene a few episodes back where he talks about wanting to have a family and how Clark's family is now his family. So saving Lois, I think, would have made more sense thematically, but would have written that character out of potential comebacks later on. I think we could have done it. I mean, you could have had him stabbed with kryptonite and goes down. You think he's dead, but it got pulled out and the soldiers find him and the DOD takes him and they secretly have him under a, in a project wing, you know, and some clandestine version of, I don't know how, how deep we want to go with character wise, but something like that where Clark and them think he's dead, but really he's being held hostage. Um, I don't know, something like that. It just kind of depends, but it is what it is. I would like to see him return. Um, I do like his arc. I do like the character. And Superman having a half-brother is cool. And my friend pointed this out. He says, why is Tal's suit so awesome and Clark sucks? <laughs> <laughs> I think what makes Tal so interesting, too... Is He's not quite an anti-hero by the end of this season, but he's got kind of that anti-hero swagger to him too. Like when he yeah. walks into the bar at that end of the episode and he's just like, Hey, I'm here. And I, none of you, can, yeah, none of you can understand me, but I'm buying drinks for everyone. Like he's got this like really interesting swagger compared to his half brother. Very strong, confident, confident man. Yeah. Um, so what, what were your thoughts about, let's see. If we're, if we're moving around characters, we have Tal kind of, we'll save Clark to the end, but let's just talk the Cushing journey. Thoughts on the Cushing journey. It was good. I like, you know, we kind of talked about the Sarah finding out about John in the previous episode a little bit. I think this one was interesting to see how much Lana still seems to care about Kyle um, for whatever that storyline ends up being worth long-term um, to see how much she cares. But by the end still being like, no, you've, you've still hurt me and I'm not ready to forgive you basically yet. I thought was a good way to end that. Cause I, you know, we had talked earlier in the season, like, well, I really hope they don't go the cheating husband route with him. So it's nice to see, that they did go that route, but they didn't give him total forgiveness by the end of the season. He still got to work for that. The I told my wife the only thing that, not that it's right or wrong, but just for a character development, the fact that we never got to see them to understand where their relationship was, who Lana was, who Kyle was at that time, to get a better sense of what happened. 
Yeah. We are just through the the portal of how they are now and that happened in the past. Um and let me ask, do you want Lana to forgive him or do you want them to explore this the idea of them being separate and Kyle slowly gets faded out of the show? So, so I'm of two minds on this and I'll explain both. On one hand, uh I don't want her to forgive Kyle because I t- I think it just goes too far into the soap opera that you could go with that route of cheating husband and then he wins her back and they get back together and the world's all perfect and great. So on one hand, I really don't want them to, but I'm also after what Lana says to Clark when he reveals his secret about like, oh, did you ever really love me? It's pretty clear she still loves him. And I feel like if she is single for too long, then the writers might be tempted to go down the uh, love triangle road. Well, let me just throw this at you. Okay. This is, this is one of my thoughts for season three. Okay. You ready? <clears throat> Pete Ross rolls back into town. He moves back to Smallville and uh, starts to kind of rekindle a friendship and a little something else special with Lana. And uh, old Pete comes in and saves the day. That so works for me. <laughs> That's a, and cause you know, and I think it would be interesting to take the Kyle character and explore the idea that he never does seek, you know, has, he has to move on with his life and he has to see what life is like without Lana and, but still be part of that family. Yeah. And at this point with Kyle, let's see, I'd like the writers to have him like throw himself into now being the best dad he possibly can. Like Lana's mayor, she's going to be busy. Let's have Kyle like step up and be like the parental figure for the Cushing girls and really yeah. lean into that. The the one scene that like, I was joking with my friend is like, I just kind of wanted a scene between like Kyle and Clark, you know, and Clark's just like, so uh, you, you, you cheated on Lana, huh? And Kyle's like, yeah, man, uh, it's none of your business, Clark. He's like, oh, yeah? Why don't you go ahead and punch me in the face, Kyle, and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> like, just this, like, kind of like Kyle goes to swing and just poof, breaks his hand. Like, that's what I thought. <laughs> it's really weird we never got, like, some sort of scene between the two. I know there's, there wasn't a ton of time to write one in. There's, but... there's, there's those glances, like, at the quinceanera. And then at the end where Clark kind of like listens in on him and he says to Lois, like, I wish everyone, you know, could be as happy as we are. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the thing is, I think it's kind of an elevated thing of Clark when he has the conversation with Lana and she asks him if Lois ever did. And he, his response about, I would ask, try to know why it happened. Yeah. I, I think it would have, not even like a confrontation between the two, just to kind of like, oh man, you really screwed this one up, and I hope you can figure it out type thing. Oh, I did forget. I did forget, sorry. For t- the Tao, when they're standing by the sun, and Tao looks at Clark and says, uh, Cal, and he goes, I know. I love you too. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. Um So, what what did you think? Okay, we'll go. We'll jump to. You. We got the whole Cushing family. Sarah finds out the, you know, the and she's kind of sitting there on the on the bench talking with Jordan, and he's starting to you know tell her the the, the story, the journey. Um, you know, they they seek out Kyle, and we we do get that one scene where Kyle's on the other Earth. He finds Lois, and he's like, basically saying like, I deserve this this is karma to be without my family. And he's like accepting his fate. And then it's right then that he gets blipped back. Um, uh, I thought that was cool. I mean, it, it worked for me. I wasn't against it. I do, Cause Kyle does love his daughters and he does deserve to be with his kids. Um, and go ahead. yeah. And that's kind of why I go to like, if, if he continues to be a major character on the show, like I'd love to see him like lean into that, like be the best father I can be at this point. That yeah, I forgot about that scene, but that scene was kind of the reason that came up. Cause like he clearly loves his girls. 
So, like, I don't want to see him go away entirely, but I don't want to see him get back with Lana. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a weird kind of like how we feel <laughs> um, situation. Um, now, what what's funny is I have this like default like my my wife picks on me when we're watching like anything Superman and like he's fighting some sort of villain that he doesn't know how to handle. And when they're like, how are we going to stop Allie? And I'm just like, put her in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> I'm like, that's how I would take out everybody. Like, Doomsday. <laughs> like, whatever. Like, what'd you do? Put him in the Phantom Zone. Um, but, you know, the whole, we have Allie, you know, pulling the worlds together. And we have, you know, what do you think about we haven't touched on here with uh, John and Nat? Oh man, I want I I don't want to spin them off into their own show because I love them on this show, but I would watch an entire show of those two. That's okay. I feel exactly the same because that's also how I felt about in Supergirl. I think season three when it was uh, Martian Manhunter and his dad. I found that storyline so much more compelling than. Uh, the main storyline. Uh, I felt the same way. I was like, ah, oh, they could get their own series, but I don't want their own series. Uh, yes, I totally agree with you. I love their relationship. I love their development. I love that she has her suit. I don't like that they didn't change the steel suit for season two. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that. I keep hoping they'll throw a red cape on it. So, Right. And that that's... At the, at the end of our conversation, we'll chat about what we want in season three, and that's still one of my things for season three. It's a train. Yeah, gotta love it. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought. Thank you. But <laughs> so we have Superman goes into um, basically Natasha shows up in the void. She got John's message. That he was sending through, but she didn't get all of it. She shows up in her suit with her shuttle, but his message told her to bring XK to explode in the void to stop Allie. And she shows up and she's like, I thought the the shuttle was for you to escape. And that's kind of where we leave them is in this moment of basically him telling her to, to not speak, conserve her oxygen. And they're kind of in the void together waiting death for not speaking they sure spoke a lot in that that scene <laughs> yeah um so that's where they're at because then we get superman emerging from the sun supercharged i mean he's got like basically glowing electricity over him he flies in he swoops through. he's moving so fast it's hard to track where he is, he swoops in, he saves Nat and John, and, you know, just keeps going, and how did you feel where he basically punches the earth, and it ripples, and shakes the... The, the world's uh, apart? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, to start... I think Superman floating in space powering up is always one of my favorite Superman images, whether it's comics, TV, movies, animated. I It's an image I love. It just works for me. Um, the punching the earth apart, um, I didn't think too hard about it at first, but as soon as we finish watching, my wife goes, so are there holes in the earth now where the planet's ripped apart? So... I look at it, he punched the earth and just like projected his energy into it. And it was the energy surge of one earth that popped apart. That's that's my head cannon. I'll go with that. That works for me because it works better than the earth having four holes from the corners. Um, yeah, it, it works kind of like, you know, how there's in the comics talk about Superman, like channeling his aura energy and projecting it. Yeah, it's along that path. Yeah, I, and I... The imagery, the Superman powering up, and for lack of a better, like the speed force type look that the Flash normally has around him, around Superman with the electricity and all that. It just looked great. So it was a great moment. And 
as soon at the beginning of the episode when he was like, there might be a way for me to power up. I just turned to my wife and they're like, oh, they're going to launch him into the sun. Like, the, it, cause of it's course. just such, it's such a S- Superman for as much as I love the character, there are the tropes that just work for it. And one of them is being launched into the sun to power up. So yeah. either he's like, either I, it works or it doesn't. And that's what I have to do. Um, and then he flies around the planet, put, you know, puts the world back together. Basically. It was it was awesome. I mean, it was a cheer moment. I mean, I was like, whew, like just this is Superman. Like this is why I love his character. Um, and it's really been a season of him kind of getting his ass kicked a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, things haven't gone his way a ton this season in physical fights. So, and it's like he always held back, and this was kind of like his like I let go, and I did what I had to do, and. So we have um, to jump ahead just a, a beat is we have both alleys are now apart, not joined. They're the parasite twins, basically. It's a version of the parasite twins. And they're in a cell by the DOD together. And Lois confronts them and says, you know, were you two ever whole? Did you ever feel whole? Um, and they're basically like, no, not really. And there's, it's, it's an interesting way, like the whole concept of the two merging, because when she was merged, she was still like two people in one, but not one person, even though they talked about it, supposed to be like one person. So it's really interesting how, um, where she ended up at the end. And I was glad that we got to see Lucy at the end because I had in my notes, like, where's Lucy? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that, that was nice. Cause I actually had to scratch that out of, of my notes. I think the alley stuff, depending on how deep you want to go into it, I think it's a nice commentary on not looking for fulfillment in other people. Even if that other person is a, bizarro earth version of yourself that like you can't find just find someone else that's going to fix you so i think a lot of that kind of with a lot mostly with uh jonathan and jordan you know it kind of felt like in a lot of ways they were looking for shortcuts this year to feel better you know jordan was always wanting sarah to make him feel better and that's why he loved her so much and you know jonathan protecting the girlfriend and all that. Like they're looking for external things to make them feel better about themselves instead of, you know, doing the work like they did in the the last episode. So that's, that's a very, very good way of putting it to kind of sum up a theme of the season. So I'm trying to break these down little beats by little beats. It's Lois there's so tells, much in this episode, <laughs> and there's so much more. Like this is one of those episodes I would later love to go back and just do a commentary over. Um, Lois telling Chrissy thoughts. Oh, I loved it. I was laughing that entire scene, and then at the end when she's staring at Clark, like and he's like, "Is she going to be like that forever?" She's like, "Yeah, probably be a while." Yeah, I, I was literally just laughing out loud the entire time she's telling because let's that's how we'd all react. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, at first I was like, wow. And I, I don't want it to get to be like the flash where like Barry just tells everybody. Um, but I think that Chrissy has become so involved in this season that there would be no way to repair her and Lois's relationship. And for Chrissy to understand what's really going on and who Lois is as a person without knowing. And you also have to explain... Like, it makes sense why Superman works with Lois Lane when she's in Metropolis, but why does Superman keep popping up in Smallville? That's the Okay, that's one thing for season three I'd like to shift, is Superman not being as involved in Smallville. Like, he's Superman, he can fly away, you know? Yeah. Um, so, now, this one's kind of a double-handed thing we're going to talk about. And this is the big, I think, part of the big one is we get a speech from Sam about, and I'm paraphrasing it here, is um, 
there are other worlds of other heroes out there, but this world just has your father. And I've seen, you know, into other worlds. And, you know, then Diggle comes in and it's Diggle talking to John Henry. And John, he mentions that Bruno Mannheim, they have a lead on Bruno Mannheim, and that Bruno Mannheim's the one that killed this Earth's John Henry. And so, okay. <laughs> I've, I've, to listened to, <laughs> I've listened to Todd Helbing talk. And he dissected the words. But at the same time, I really think when they started season one, I've, and I've heard this, it was supposed to be very much tied to the Arrowverse. And first of all, let's clarify that term Arrowverse. First of all, I've always hated that. Second of all, I just sent you a map that I drew because I was bored of the new multiverse. All right, let me look. <laughs> okay. And I added some stuff in there. But... If you want to get technical, it still is in the Arrow verse. It's just not on Earth Prime, because technically, as established in, cri- in Crisis, you know, uh, Titans, Swamp Thing, Doom Patrol, Star Girl, are all in that same multiverse universe. Yeah, you know, even the DC films are in that. So I mean, it's part of that multiverse. But it's not Earth Prime. Okay. I think it works with Sam's speech. You know, Todd Helbing talked about the idea that there were other heroes on Earth, but there was no super-powered heroes. Superman is the only super-powered hero. So it's trying to pad out that there was an Oliver Queen, you know, but he just wasn't super-powered. Okay. I'm going with you. Um, I've, you know, I've heard about how they changed things from the original pilot script. Um, Got all this train. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I don't care. Honestly, it adds to the ambiance of, of more powerful than a wolf move. Uh, <laughs> I, I have luckily the trains that are near me are far enough back that, but I used to live right by a railroad and I lived next to a church, a Catholic church. So it would ring their bells. So <laughs> trust me, I get it. Um, I feel like. The Diggle stuff is what doesn't really work for me because it was so on the nose last season, even though you can kind of read it both ways that they're saying that this is just a Diggle, a Diggle doppelganger. Um, it's not the same Diggle from the other ones. And I'm like, OK, I'll go with it. I don't think it really works, but I'll go with it. OK, um, but I do like that this Earth, it's set on its own Earth. In the new multiverse. Um, it helps refresh. Like how Lucy was refreshed. It helps refresh. Um, all the characters. It it you know explains why. Supergirl's never been mentioned on this show. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't explain how there's technically. A Superman on Earth Prime. That hasn't done anything. So now when you look at the last season of Supergirl. All I can think is. Well where's Superman. There's no mention of him. <laughs> you know, that's because originally he was supposed to be doing the Superman and Lois thing when all this was being done, but then they decided to change that. Cause I'm a I'm a you know, I'm really big on continuity. <laughs> yeah. So, um but you know, the fact that all these other shows are cancelled and it's just the flash that's carrying on Prime Earth right now. It it makes more sense to this to be on its own. But I would love a Barry and Tyler team up though before Barry's gone. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where I fall on it. Um, with all the other shows that were canceled this spring and early summer, I'm glad it. I'm glad it survived, and it makes the most sense to put it on its own Earth at this point. Um, I did read something from the producer that said they made this decision towards the end of filming season one, but he was contractually obligated to not divulge it, which I'm not sure how much I believe. Um, But to the Diggle stuff, if, if this is a completely separate version of Diggle, I would have liked to have seen them lean into the line from um, the Elseworlds crossover when the, uh, John Wesley shit flash called him John Stewart and asked right. him where his ring was make him John to... Stewart on this earth. 
with right. you don't even have to put the ring on him that you could tease that you could have kept the Green Lantern tease as alive going forward in the future, like they had been doing uh, on Earth Prime. Yeah, um, that that was one thing. Like that's why I'm saying the Diggle stuff just doesn't quite work for me, but I'm gonna go with it because he should have just been John Stewart. If this Simple. is a way for them to bring him into the the Superman and Lois universe and just have him be an Argus agent, I love him. Uh, I'm I'm in season three of Arrow right now, rewatching it, and he's still such such a great character. Like let's let's rework him a little bit, bring him back into the fold, and have him be an Argus contact. Sure, I'm all for that, especially where they're taking season three for Superman and Lois. Right, right. And I agree. Make him the Argus worker. Make him straight up John Stewart. Um, like you said, like uh, Todd Helbing had said, is like certain characters getting a new coat of paint, and that's what they did to Lucy. So, give John another John uh, uh, on the show, a third John, uh, a new coat of paint, and make him just flat out John Stewart. You yeah. know, if you don't want to put the ring on him, I think that's a. I think not making him just a Green Lantern because where else is he going to show up? You know, there's supposed to be that show that he's supposed to do, but we'll see. Um, but th- yeah, I don't mind it being on its own Earth. That's what it boils down to. It's part of the new multiverse, which I would love when the Flash ends because technically Earth Prime Flash they have not discovered the new multiverse yet. And I really would, I want them to, because I really wanted to see Stargirl appear somewhere, because I think Stargirl season three, they moved to Canada to film it. I don't know if it was, I can't remember. There's been too much stuff happen. Um, It wasn't shot, I think in Georgia, like it had been, I think they moved it to Canada, but anyways, that's kind of my big thing. My big takeaway is I'm okay with it being on its own earth. It helps free up the continuity because they'd already, um, it left a lot of questions and things like what's going on, um, with the way they left, you know, the characters, but I, I would like at least maybe one appearance for Tyler on the flash as earth prime Superman, just cause I really like them together. That way you'd never have to worry about, you know, putting back in the other costume to help, you know, keep it clear in people's minds. Um, or, you know, whatever, but well, they just... could, they could even do it like they did, uh, the first time Supergirl and Flash crossed over on her show where Barry was experimenting with Cisco and accidentally crossed over to her earth. You could do something like that. I mean, they could, but I think the part is they really don't want this show or earth touched by anything else. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, just do something with prime earth superman and barry because technically they're still prime earth superman um but whatever it it is what it is i mean it kind of sucks that the flash is still going and we built up the super friends the justice whatever it was going to be and you know supergirl like i would love for just like supergirl to pop into one episode with the flash if this is gonna be the flash's final season you know coming up it would be cool if we just kind of really Gave it a good farewell with wrapping up some of that loose ends and stuff. Definitely, yeah. But, you know, now it makes me more excited. So here's my question to you. What do you want to see in a season three? I mean, the tease they had there at the end with uh, Bruno Mannheim and Intergang, I think that'd be super interesting to see because obviously these first two seasons have been... uh, cosmic world ending type threats let's have them i don't want to say take on a more grounded story but take on a smaller story maybe no i i'm with you i make make it more personal um and, and you know smaller is fine you know when it's personal and i don't need superman like punching the sun um what else you thinking well, with Inner Gang, I'm thinking it makes it easier to make Clark a reporter again, which obviously they teased with the part of being why Lois tells uh, Chrissy the secret is so Clark can reasonably come work with them. Um, I I'd love to see the Daily Planet. 
Yeah. Like since... when, when Morgan Edge technically gets outed as Tal Ro and all this stuff, like it would be interesting if you had the Daily Planet reaching out back to maybe to Clark and Lois about being like a correspondent or something. Yeah. And that I, could get Clark back into the fold of going to Metropolis. And we have a couple episodes set in Metropolis. I'm always a sucker to for Superman stories where you get to see Clark be a reporter. So yeah. I think inner gang would be a good day to do that. He doesn't even have to actually like do the reporter part of it, but showing Clark may be investigating and teaching Jordan and Jonathan, like, Hey, this is what you look for. This is how you investigate crime without yeah. using um, the costume to do it type stuff could be really interesting, especially teasing uh, Jonathan with crypt uh, Kryptonian devices at the end of the season. Maybe there's stuff that he can use to be a larger part of the series going forward. I, I agree. And we were going to go back to that last beat of the episode just in a second. Uh, here's my quick rundown list. Jordan in a costume. Yeah. Superman gets a new suit. Um, Pete Ross, I already mentioned him, comes in for season three as a love interest for Lana. Steel gets a new suit with the symbol and the cape. John Cryer comes back as Lex Luthor for an episode or two. Not a whole season. Just a couple of episodes with his new coat of paint. Now that we know it's on a separate Earth. Yeah. And then the end is when Colin Salmon shows up as Zod. And it ties Superman and Lois' Earth to Krypton, the show. Anything to get Krypton more, uh, the show Krypton, back in any way, shape, or form I'm down with. Um, Or a dimensional portal opens and Segel falls out. Yeah, I'd really, really... I the new costumes you mentioned. I'd love to see Jonathan or Jordan in something. Um, although I do love the hoodie and leather jacket look he rocked the couple times he did it, kind of uh, mirroring the cover of the Superman Earth One graphic novel. Um, but I'm with you. I really want to see. They don't need to make a ton of changes to Superman's costume. It's the symbol in the neckline. It's the symbol, it's the neckline. Um, I don't mind if you're going to put padded muscles in a costume because no actor should be forced to put on 30 pounds. It's also, you know, for safety and even when you're not doing stunt work, you're just doing stuff. It's nice to have the padding for Cushing, um, you know, because the actor actually has to do some things sometimes, you know. Yeah, I just, I, my problem with the padding is there's times, there's certain things he does, movements where the the padding moves and the way muscles don't around yep. him and it uh-huh. it takes me out of the like really when he lifts his arms up above his head or shoulder that all height. has to do with the shoulder neckline stuff yeah it just you, that was the one thing the other costume got right was the neckline and the symbol and then this costume does the two things it gets wrong so i think a couple small tweaks could really fix those things um but yeah, like we were talking about earlier, if we could get a red cape on John Henry, that would be perfect at this point. Yeah, I think he's he, earned it. I agree. I think, you know, and we kind of create <laughs> Team Superman. Um, and you could even do something where we have some team ups with Natasha and Jordan. Um, and, okay, so jumping back, this the episode ends with the, the Kent fishing trip. And Clark throws a a crystal into the water. And we don't know where they are. And the new fortress starts to grow. And it's reminiscent of more of the classic traditional fortress. And Clark mentions to Jonathan. uh, His mom really wants to meet him. And that there's some Kryptonian tech inside. I think it'd be kind of neat if Jonathan gets some sort of Kryptonian tech and starts that maybe mimics powers or does something, you know, um, some sort of maybe Kryptonian armor or something where he actually gets involved in stuff, but more from a tech based kind of like steel and Natasha are, um, but it's yeah. more biotech, you know, cause it's Kryptonian and it's like maybe attached to their DNA. Um, something like that to give him something to do. Um, 
so we don't feel like his character because I feel like he's gotten beaten down. He's lost everything. He lost sports twice. And he's still dating that girl. And my wife said, <laughs> said he's still dating blank filling with adult word. Um, it was hilarious. Um, so yeah, I just, I think we need to do something for him. Agreed. They've got to, got to help him get his groove back somehow. Um, the one fear I have with the Kryptonian tech, especially with it being the CW, is they make him the Felicity or uh, Cisco quarterback to yeah. Jordan. And, I mean, that, okay, if it's to Jordan, it could kind of be fun. Like, as, like, they're this B team, like, Jordan and Natasha and Jonathan form this, like, B team. It could be fun. Um, but at the same time, I don't want it to, him to just be the, the man in the chair. Yeah. We, and I'm not super afraid they're going to do it because they've been really good with this show on not falling into the usual CW tropes. Um, yep. But Helbing did come from The Flash, so there's always that like fear in the back of my mind with the series. So, but I but I look I but I look at what he did in The Flash. You know, the best Flash is when he was involved. Yeah. And, you know, so he knows how to tell a good story. And I feel like he, in a way, the Flash set the template more than the Arrow did, even though Arrow was first. Um, if you go back and kind of start to watch the shows in parallel, I think the Flash really dialed it in more correctly. Um, so, but yeah. But all right, man. So final thoughts before we get out of here. Uh, final thoughts. Um, season two was really good. Uh, there are some of the best Superman imagery type moments in this season um, that I think you can find really anywhere. Uh, I'll just default back to him coming out of the sun, glowing and rippling with power. That feels like something you'd see right out of the comics. Um, and they have somehow managed to strike the tone between... Uh, a family-oriented show and still making the hardcore Supermans very happy at the same time. So, I agree. Um, I agree. So that's going to wrap up this special part here we had with Levi. Levi, thank you. Where can people reach you online to chat with you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at the Round Superman. All right, and then this is my last question for Levi. Did you find any good McFarland figures lately? Oh, man. Uh, yes, uh, I believe we talked about, I picked up the CW Flash one they just did. I dipped into the piggy bank and picked up the Arrow one they actually did as well, based off that Stephen one, Amell. That one I don't have, but I got my John Kent figure. I, did, I got John Kent and then Lex Luthor, uh, the New the 52 target? power suit one. I did order the Target one. I, I did Cave. That um, one... I, do, I pre-ordered uh, Black Adam yesterday. I did go pre-order uh, both of the Black Adams and Hawkman. I did Hawkman and I did Black Adam with the cloak. I pre-ordered I, both Black Adams. I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up canceling because I only want to get one. I like the cloak one. Just something about it looks – it's different enough than just kind of being – I don't know. It just – it gave it a more mystique look. Yeah. I'm already planning lining him up next to one of the cave L Superman ones I have and really, really hoping they do a Shazam one. So, Oh, you know, they will, you know, because that's the next movie and that they're pretty much guaranteed to do the movie. Um, and I, I suspect that we'll see Shazam figures probably like the, let's see, it's July. We, and that's five months, right? We should see the previews for him, I would think, it's pretty August, soon. July, August. So it's three months, July, August, September, October. So we're about three, four months, so four months away. So I would say probably within the next, I'd say by August, early October, we'll be able to pre-order the Shazam figures. I'm hoping so. I, I, I can't wait to get the Black Adam one and... uh 
I'm friends with, with uh, the Geek of Steel as well, and he got The Rock to respond to a tweet about Superman being in Black Adam, so there is hope for that as well. And, you know, I've, I've tweeted out, I think it might have been talking with Luke, I don't remember, I talked to a lot of people, um, just, you know, if, if Black Adam and Superman meet, I want it to be kind of like a, like, almost like Black Adam thrown out his chest kind of thing, but it's not going to be them fighting. If there's going to be somebody else who shows up. It's going to be kind of like how Godzilla and Kong at the end had a fight, Mecha Godzilla together. But yeah. So we'll, actually, I got I'll, I got something I'll throw at you when we get off mic here. All right. So let's go ahead and say bye, and then we'll talk from there. All Sounds right, good. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, Caped Wonder, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope podcast.